YouTube, it's Thea, and this video is going to be my September and October book haul. I did do a library book sale haul already in September, um, which I will link down below or up on the card symbol if you haven't seen, but these are kind of just some miscellaneous books that I purchased throughout the month, and then I do have some books for October. I am getting ready to leave for work, so I really quickly wanted to pop in and film this and get it up for you guys early on in the month. Um, so this will be kind of pretty short, um, and most of these are probably pretty, um, pretty popular, so I don't need too much explanation. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So the first two books, um, part, it's part of like the miscellaneous section in September is going to be The Legend of Luke and Triss. These are both part of the Redwall series. Um, I've just been collecting a few that my boyfriend um, has suggested to read because they're um, kind of all like companion novels and so you don't really need to read like all of them in order. They're all different stories within the universe. I um, really enjoyed the couple books in the Redwall series that I have read so I wanted to go ahead and pick these up. Um, so yeah, and they at the used bookstore, they were only like three or four dollars. So I figured go ahead and pick these up and give them a read. And my September choice for book of the month was The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is actually the winner of the Booker Prize. Um, I had never heard of it until book of the month and it sounded really exciting. It's basically um, kind of a reimagining of the Iliad from the point of view of the captured women living in the Greek camp during the final weeks of the Trojan War. That was all I needed and I was sold. Um, and it's not super thick. I really enjoy that like most books of books from Book of the Month aren't very long. I think this one's only like 300, it's like just under 300 pages. Um, and I've been trying to branch out a little bit more into some more like historical fiction and this seemed really interesting so I'm really excited to eventually dive into this. And the last thing in September is a graphic novel and that is Revival Volume 4, Escape to Wisconsin by Tim Seeley. Um, I don't want to give too much away since this is the fourth volume in the series but basically it follows a town in rural Wisconsin where all of a sudden the dead are coming back to life and it's usually a lot of them are like family members or friends of the people who are living in this town and it follows our main character whose name is Officer Dana Cypress and um, it's kind of just them dealing with it, learning why they came back, what their intentions are. Um, it's kind of like a noir mystery thriller kind of um, graphic novel series. It is a little dark but it's really good. I'm really enjoying it um, and so we picked up the fourth volume. And then uh, let's dive into October. I have six books, five were thrift store finds, and one was a pre-order. <sighs> my pre-order, oh my goodness. Um, it's What If It's Us by Adam Silvera and Becky Albert Halley. I am so in love with this book. I'm currently reading it. I'm about three chapters in. Absolutely loving it. Um, I don't pre-order books very often, um, just because most of the books that I get are like thrift store finds, but I knew that this was going to be like one of the only books that I pre-order and I am just absolutely loving it. I love Adam Silvera, I love Becky Apertali. I mean, it's New York and it's summertime, male male romance, you could not go wrong, but um, I just absolutely love this. I did an unboxing for it in my Spookathon vlog where I, no joke, actually cried. Um, <laughs> I was like bawling when I opened it. And I'll link that down below if you haven't seen it. But I am so excited to continue reading this. And um, I'm taking my time with it because I want to enjoy it. And I know that I could binge this and like read it in a day or two. But I'm taking my time because I want to just savor every single moment of it. And, and, and enjoy it that much longer. So I'm taking my time with it. But I'm so excited to um, have this in my hands and be reading it. And I'm just... Oh, I'm just absolutely in love with it. The uh, five books that I have here are actually from the thrift store. Goodwill was having a 50% off sale as well as a buy four get one free. So uh, of course I was going to um, take advantage of that sale. <laughs> um, so these are kind of just a miscellaneous of what I found on the shelves that it was something interested in or something that I had heard of. So uh, the first one on the top here is Fable Haven by Brandon Mole. This is like a pretty beat up coffee, but this was like... 49 cents um and I'm really excited this has been on my TBR forever um and most people who really enjoy middle grade fantasy says that this is like a great series um so I'm really excited to dive into this if you don't know what it's about it I will just read you the back here it says four centuries mythical creatures were gathered in a into a hideous for centuries, mythical creatures were gathered into a hidden refuge called Fablehaven to prevent their extinction. 
The sanctuary is one of the last strongholds of true magic. Enchanting, absolutely. Exciting, you bet. Safe, well, actually quite the opposite. Kendra and her brother Seth have no idea that their grandfather is the current caretaker, caretaker of Fable Haven. I cannot speak this morning. <laughs> Inside the gated woods, ancient laws keep order among greedy trolls, plotting witches, spiteful imps, and jealous fairies. However, when the rules get broken, powerful forces of evil are unleashed and Kendra and her brother must face the, face the greatest challenge of their lives to save their family, Fable Haven, and perhaps even the world. This just sounds like something that I'm really gonna enjoy. So, and for 49 cents, I couldn't pass it up and I cannot wait to dive into this. I also um, picked up The Devil in the White City by Eric Loss Larson. This is kind of like a staple classic. Um, semi nonfiction, semi fiction, mystery novel. Um, I know Reagan recently hauled it. Um, I actually got this this was like a dollar maybe a dollar maybe two dollars um I don't know much about it I just know it's like a pretty classic novel um uh, it says here bringing Chicago 1883 to vivid life Eric Larson's spellbinding bestseller intertwines the true tale of two men the brilliant architect behind the legendary 1893 World's Fair striving to secure America's place in the world and the cunning serial killer who used the fair to lure his victims to their death Combining research with nail-biting storytelling, Eric Larson has crafted a narrative with all the wonder of newly discovered history and the thrills of the best fiction. So yeah, it sounds like it's like a fictional account of a non-fiction event, um, and I've heard that it's really good and it's a classic book. So it was in pretty good condition and it was like a dollar, so I gotta go ahead and pick it up and give it a read. The, uh, the next book is also another kind of staple classic literary fiction novel, and that is Middlesex. Um, this is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I don't know what year, but um, this basically follows our main girl, uh, Callie, who is just kind of follows her life um, from her and her Greek American family from when they travel from Asia Minor, Asia Minor to uh, Detroit in 1960, in the 19, like the Prohibition era Detroit, and through the race riots in 1967, and then and then it basically just follows her once they um, finally get to Michigan. And then in Michigan, she kind of starts to have to uncover a family secret and why she feels like she's not like other girls. And then eventually Callie turns into Cal. And it does say here that it's one of the most wondrous narratives in contemporary fiction. And it's an exhilarating reinvention of the American epic. Um, this is, I've heard, it's just one of those like staple classic literary fiction novels that everyone has to read in their life. Um, it's pretty thick. I think it's like 400 pages. It's like 530 pages or so. Um, and it's in really good condition. I got this for like a dollar. But um, this author actually is the author of The Virgin Suicides as well. So it's going to be a really good read. And I'm really excited to eventually dive into this. And I also picked up The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. I've never actually read anything by Leanne Moriarty. Um, Big Little Lies is something I'd like to read eventually, but for this was like 99 cents in really good condition. I couldn't really pass it up. I don't know too much about it. Um, it says, imagine your husband wrote you a letter to be opened after his death. Imagine, too, that the letter contains his deepest, darkest secret, something with the potential to destroy not only the lives you have built together, but the lives of others as well. And then imagine that you stumble across that letter while your husband is still very much alive. That was pretty much all I needed. Um, again, it was like a dollar, so I couldn't really pass it up, and it's in really good condition. And um, I know a lot of people really enjoy Liam Moriarty, so I'm really excited to give this a try and um, see if I like it. And then the last book is A Dog's Way Home by W. Bruce Cameron. This is his most recent novel. I believe it just came out last year. He's the author of um, A Dog's Purpose, which I did read, enjoyed. Um, it's a pretty good dog, like pretty good like animal novel. I don't read a lot of animal novels now that I'm older. I did when I was younger. Um, but again, for 99 cents, I couldn't really pass it up. I know it's becoming a movie, um, next year as well. So I figured might as well go ahead and give it a read and then watch the adaptation. Basically, the summary of this story is it's kind of like um, Homeward Bound. It's about this dog who gets separated from his owner and travels, you know, 
uh, 400 miles to return to him. Um, and it's in still pretty good condition. It's almost brand new. And for a dollar, I couldn't pass it up, so I figured I'd go ahead and give this a read as well. So here are all the books that I've hauled recently. Let me know down in the comments below what you've hauled recently, if you've read any of these, any thoughts, comments, and opinions about any of these. If you'd like reviews on anything, let me know. I'll make that a priority to read first. Um, as always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe if not already. Thank you so much for watching. Happy reading, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!